Brimstone instantly. Mateo will be there. Four people that will get the ace. He will win. Oh, no. <laughs> the knife is there. He's going to be going for the knife. What a disrespect. That pixel going down. Another one. Don't mind. Fight to the soon. He's sticking the defuse. Not like this. Go for the one that might come never. Oh, hello. Welcome, guys, to the final day of the group stage. We are your Catcasters, Dax here, and Ryujin. And we welcome you all to the third season of the University Alliance Cup featuring Valorant. The top 12 collegiate Valorant teams in the Philippines are all here competing to raise a campus torch, a prize pool of over 150,000 pesos, the right to call themselves the best in the country in scholarships. So here we are. Ryujin, I don't know why we decided to get our cats. It feels like mm -hmm. they kind of want to run on away already. Maybe you should let them go because we mm -hmm. want to get into the action. But before that, say say hi to the camera, Machi. Hello. What's the name of your cat? <laughs> uh, my name, my cat's name is Coco. You know, you oh. can see him. Kind of yeah. looks like milk tea, and his eyes look like little pearls. <laughs> so you know, that's just a little background. No, even uh, even as casters, we all have our name origins. Even our cats. Mm -hmm. Let's have uh, origin spender names. That's right, that's right. I'll, put, I'll put my cat in the oh, background already because we need to get down see. to business, Ryujin. This is a big one. Mm -hmm. And this is a perfect time for us to actually look at the standings because funny enough, mm -hmm. we were debating. We were against the production today about the standings with some of these matchups. And we said that for Group A that it's pretty much locked in who's in the playoffs, but it's more of a battle to see who's actually going to mess up today and fall to the lower side of the playoffs here. Mm -hmm, indeed, like in the group A, we already know who's uh, who's gonna be going to the playoffs, right? But it's just a matter of who's gonna have the better advantage. Who's gonna have, who's gonna take advantage of you know some, some teams messing up, possibly going lower, maybe not securing the first seed. It's it's yeah. still a it's still a very big what if on today's um, standings. But in the end, it's already locked in anyway, so mm -hmm. it's nothing much to lose. Yeah, that's so true. It's like, okay, guys, so they're all 3-1, they're all 1-3. And it's just all mm -hmm. about who will actually get that buy into the semifinals. Remember, guys, play us. We get our top three, and for top one of each group, they're straight into the semis. But here, in Group B region, there is upset potential. There is a chance for that first seat to be yoinked. And there is a chance for the MGS clubs. Why is that so? It's MGS clubs are currently standing, uh, currently at a tie, actually, at a three-way tie, if I'm not mistaken, uh, with um, LG MCL. And really, if you see at um, MGS clubs, if they take a win today, if they nab a win today against, they're going to be in a tie. And I'm not entirely sure on who won in the head, who wins in the head-to-head -head matchups, but... In the end, we're going to have a possible three-way tie between Admo, MCL, and uh, MGS clubs if um, mm -hmm. certain teams lose and win today. You know, um, Howard's going to be up against MCL and Admo's going to be up against yeah. the MGS club. So, really, um, a very, very big possibility of a three-way tie. And that's when Group B gets really, really interesting. Yeah, and I'm looking at the schedule right now, and I do believe that's the very last game. So yes, it's really going to define course. it. Will Admit trip on up, or will we get, of course, them back into the playoffs? And you can see our schedule here, guys. We're going to kick things off with TUPM versus FIT, and then it's the battle of the Zero Win Squadrons looking to claim their first victory, FEU versus USC. CSB then versus USD. We've got MCL versus HAU, NEU versus DLSU, and finally, it will be that MUM an ad game we were talking about but here we have it yet again Ooh. one of our favorite newest segments we got bar the gulan just looking for the fights and looking for the debate so this is the perfect way to start things off because it's pretty much the same question we were asking in division a in group a rather mm -hmm. than Ryujin. who's gonna finish at first seat is it fit is it dlsu or usd what are your thoughts about this I gotta go for uh usd usd is on fire usd last week really surprised me with their performance and you know earlier in our earlier talks if we were comparing them to some international teams you know they are they are showing that they are a profesh team they're not just some pop star um you know stompers right so really yeah. you see the strategies you see how organized they are when they play so i'm really going for usd here yeah, i get i get you and i i think i think at the same time that i also agree with what you said. USD, they compete 
in the collegiate scene. They've done waves and waves of incredible achievements. And not only that, they also play in the pro scene as a team. So they have that experience against the threshold squadrons. They play like a unit compared to the likes of FIT, where in all honesty, when we see them, it's just like, you guys want to roll some kiddos in the collegiate <laughs> side. You want to show on up. And DLSU, they're not really too famous for having the best regular season performance. It's just when playoff mode allows them to get the championship. So maybe, just maybe. I'm not sure how the tiebreakers completely work, but I want to go with you. I'll go for USC there. But here we have it. Second question now. Who is safe from the relegations? Will it be CSP, TUP, or NEU? Let's start with you, Region, again, mm -hmm. again, because in these situations, I love to hear what you have to say first. Ooh. It gives me time to get answers. Relegations. Now, that's, that's very interesting. But TUP... Statistically, I think they have one of the better chances of being safe from relegations because, you know, they are our first game today. And if uh, if TUP wins, I think they have a f around 50% chance of getting fourth place via the head-to-head -head advantage. So they are probably one of the safer teams. I'm probably I'm going to go for TUP today. Uh, well, on my side, I actually want to tip my hat a little bit to CSB here because they've really proven themselves in their first victory. All of their matches have been very, very close. And more mm -hmm. often than not, the, the CSB squad, should, there was a lot of hype coming into, well, their entry into Division A. And it's been a tough bracket, I got to say. So that's really made them lose out more often than they would win but just goes to show that there is still a chance and you i can also say that they have that chance to take that win and we'll see again it's all about who's gonna be messing up in group a mm -hmm. and who's gonna be actually getting that upset but here we have it who's the better content machine you got goop on one side and you got habolito of course we have to say uh -huh. it that way just in case mm -hmm. uh, i i gotta say i'm not too sure because both of these guys are very very charming when you see them in in those uh, overheard Here segments, comes. right? It's just yeah, like, it's yeah. like, wait, wait, okay, to. I'm, <laughs> I'm not too sure. I'm very split. I, I think they're both great. I, I can't, you I can't know, decide. I'm sticking to Goop. I mm. will not forget the first day of the season of season three. He was bottom fragging for UST, and then he busted out an Odin, and then you could see his <laughs> smiles after every round with the Odin. You could see his smiles. You could see him just, just. Getting hype, you know, mm. in, in ascent of all maps, and then you brushed out the the Odin, he was playing Sova. I it's just it's just comedy. I, I, I love watching Goop and then you know busting out the Odin. So I'm, I'm gonna go for Goop here. <laughs> okay, since he went for Goop, I just want I'll I'll tip my hat a little bit to Habolito. <laughs> just because his name is the biggest bait for all of the casters, and mm. we just don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> it's like oops, oops, oops. We we gotta say it that way. So uh, the, it's it just goes to show, right? There's so much personality in the collegiate scene, but here we have it now. Unexpected win loss record. CUP going one three and USC going zero four. And Ooh. I feel like for this one, I actually want to say more TUP going one three over USC going zero four. Mm -hmm. Since as soon as we got confirmation that one of the star players of USC wasn't really gonna be playing too much in the season anymore and focusing on his professional side. It, it kind of removed that luster from USC moving forward. It yeah. looks like a completely new team with some of the filmer faces going on away. It's a far cry from mm -hmm. the Season 2 USC mm -hmm. version, right? Mm -hmm, indeed. I mean, we've seen USC at the very top. We've seen them. And, you know, there's a story of the, the, the organization overall. I mean, you know, you in the previous season, you were the heavy favorites. And then you're going to go to the semis. You, don't, you arguably don't have your best player. And then now, they're a shadow of their former selves. It, 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 yeah. It's kind of um, disappointing, sad, but, you know, it's, it's okay. It, it happens. happens. <laughs> it happens. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the thing. Even in real in sports, right? We we have a championship team for one year, then people start leaving, and then next mm -hmm. year it's all about that rebuild. So a little unfortunate for USC. So TP Day will get that. I'd say more unexpected side. But finally, I believe this is the last question here. Who's the mm -hmm. better chance? You got Prophecy. You got Arkiza. You got Yanagi. And you got Savvy. Many of these players have really made a big case for themselves. But what do you think? I, I think there's two questions to this one here, Eugene. First, who's the better jet right now in the group stage? And then the second one is who is gonna be the better jet coming into the playoffs? What do you think? Uh you know, for your first question, I'm probably gonna go for Yanagi. I mean, Yanagi has been sticking with the jet is. ever since season one, right? You know, it, it's he's been he's been the uh one of the go-to jet players, you know, he's always there in the highlights. 
But when it comes to stepping up in the playoffs, I gotta give it to Savi. The man yeah. dropped 40, a 40 bomb, just cause the odds were what, 11 to 1, 12 to 1. Mm-hmm. So I gotta, I gotta make sure, I gotta stop, you know, support him. He is the, you know, he's the playoff king. Yeah, the finest king, right? He is, honestly. Look, you know, this 11 1, it wasn't 10 2 because I can never vote for Lasal versus Ateneo. That is a big no no to me. That is, uh, uh, no matter what, no matter what the facts are, uh, I can't I can't go for that. But for Savvy, yeah, playoff wise, he has the best. For the regular season, though, I do want to give it to Arkiza, who I've seen improve not only in the pro side, but also here as well. But besides that, Bar the Coolin is done. I love that we got to go through those questions because they're not. They're the hot ones, I gotta say, for the season. And it's it's a fun segment. We get to talk about things. We we get to just shoot the stuff. But here we have it now. It's time for our first game. And you were giddy about this as soon as yes. you learned the map. So what's up? Yes. Why are we why are we getting split and why are you excited? I mean, I love split, just personally as a player. I mean, I have a controller main, I have an Astro main. I love playing in split, holding down the A site, and I, I love learning as well. You know, um, as much as I love this map, um, it's also fun for me to watch. You know, some the, I agree with you, these players are better than me. So, you know, just watching them, how they play it in this map, what they do, uh, what I can implement in my own game, it kind it's it's fun to, you know, learning as well as you know enjoy the action in the game but take a look at the clear difference in the controller between the two teams that have ah, omen and astra Ooh, what? what is this what is, is this masters berlin is this like some <laughs> na versus eu stuff why are we getting these kind of calls but no in all honesty we mentioned it quite a while well i i really pushed this narrative right now for this season it's tradition versus innovation fit a squadron that loves to play traditionally for the collegiate side they have this clear-cut double duelist composition and they just say we can just roll everyone and anyone in front of us but on the flip side gearhawks right now whipping out that astro whipping out that breach it's a little bit risky right now to play both in terms of the it's it's kind of like a double setup scenario, right? So there's gonna be a yeah. bit more of that slow side, but at the same time, if things work out for them, if they get that crowd control on versus FIT, it's gonna be an immense, immense pressure versus that squadron. But guys, this is it, our first match. And before we get into it, you just wanna thank our partners real quick. This tournament is presented by Asus Republic Gamers, powered by the rating king of gaming laptops, the ROG Zephyrus S17, featuring an 11th gen Intel Core i9 CPU, cool with the metal and GeForce RTX 3080. GPU to take your gaming experience to the next level for hashtag for those who dare. Available in your nearest Asus and ROG credit stores nationwide. Hop on to rog.academy.com to check it out. And shout out to our partners as well at Logitech G. If you're looking to supercharge your gaming setup so you can hashtag keep playing, check out Logitech's amazing gaming gear at logitech.academy.com now. But what a way to start the day. Ryujin, I was like talking to you. I was like, guys, I, I come from the Berlin broadcast. I get the last game and I wake up to this. Now I'm excited. My blood is pumping. But come on, what do you think about this comp here for TUP? So far for the comp here, I really like it. It's just, it, you gotta know where to set up. Germanium knows what he's doing though. Manages to get an early, early dink there. As uh, they are forced to give and surrender heaven. But Miko, making sure Germanium knows he is the better jet for now. We have it now. At least a little bit pick up for Kashi though, trying to go for the taps and the paranoia being thrown on out here by Kiel. But Pran's gonna get on the board. And here we have Miko catching out Modski in response. Miko has been a stellar, stellar performer, really, in the regular season. And we'll see him right now. Oh, the jet quickly as he comes. Quickly, he will get to take that. Looking for the ace. Kashi will deny it from him. But tricks with that final blow. And Miko, oh me, oh my. Here he comes yet again, there, Eugen. He is on fire. Just when we were talking about the best jets, he comes up with the 4K early on. And wow, I'm impressed as uh I'm I'm just uh it's a classic by the way. That's something I could never do with a classic. Dude, the classic is so good. Free gun, you get the right clicks. Mm-hmm. Come on, come on. We we see it even for the very best. Sometimes they just say, you know, I have an op. And I have a classic, and that's all I need. But what's here right now? The I Tam rounds. They just play their usual stuff. Look to snowball out of control. Look to outclass the opposition in terms of mechanics. And hasn't that been the FIT formula for like the past three seasons here, Ryujin? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, they have been consistent on the rise here, not showing any signs of, you know, of, of decline. 
they're just getting better every season. And, you know, maybe this is the season that they finally bring it up. You know, bro, hoist up that uh, campus torch. Yeah, that's just how it is. Can they actually go for the championship? And it feels like that's been the burning question for FIT. It's not about if they can win the championship. It's when. When will they actually be able to do it? And is it going to be their season? We'll find out very, very soon. But Bat goes already coming in close. Trick's going to get on the board as well. It is just a pretty clean up uh, scenario here for the side of FIT. They bring a mop. They just put it in the faces of TUP because of that gun advantage. And it's all about keeping it clean here. Akashi hiding on the side. Might be able to get surprised. Beautiful shot from Akashi. Akashi versus Admiral, at least getting one on the board. But after everything is said and done, it's 2 to 0 now for FIT. I'd take that eco damage, you know? Like you said, the classic, you saw that they were on a full save. One right click manages to outplay someone who fully bought util, a fully bought gun. So, you know what? I take it. Zero for no, zero, uh, no cost gun for around, what, 3,000 worth credits by. I call it worth, but now yeah. this should be a bonus round. This should be pretty much um, going in favor of T. But we've seen surprises before with these types of bonus rounds. That's the thing, and we just want to say we appreciate you guys watching there. Also, a special shout out to to Taylor, just taking a picture of those cats. So. Uh, no, cat cam. It's always good. It's always good. But this is where the matchup really gets heated here, Ryushin. It's a 2 0 for the defense on split, pretty much as expected. Nico, though, pushing on forward and back goes with a covering fire. Admiral on the board as well. It's 5v3 right now. And the Gearhawks, they're trying to make this B play work, but they're getting torn apart. Miko looking for another shot. Nanoswarm is there. Jermaine does get one, but besides that, that's it. A while ago, getting one was fine. It was eco. But now, getting one is not okay What? Whatsoever. Your guns get dropped on the floor, and the I Tamara was happy to scrounge them there. Mm -hmm. They have built themselves a nice little nest egg here in terms of their economy. They're pretty much set for the next two or three rounds, no matter what happens, win or lose. They're gonna be fine. They're gonna be all armed up. Look, Kiel. Look at Kiel. He's still sticking to the Spectre. Even he's not even gonna go for a rifle. Knows that their opponents are going to be on an eco. So, what's the point of upgrading, right? You can just upgrade the next game and it's actually a full value. Yeah, come on. Just, just keep that money. Save it for a rainy day and put some money into crypto, guys. So, we are not responsible for the money that you put <laughs> in and those kind of things. But then again, unfortunately, you can't turn Valorant credits into real money. And Admiral right now, can he be cash money here? Oh, it's a wall on up being set here by the side of Bat goes. An interesting call, honestly, for this garage hold, but now Aftershock gonna come on forward. Here comes the Gearhawks, though, and Jermaine with that first pickoff. This is Chaz Miko, though, peeking on out, and Monty now overrunning Batgos, but we're not done. Miko is there, Blitzen gonna get on the board instead, and it's 3v2 here, Ryujin. This is quite a turn of events, just like that. They thought they had garage control, they got swarmed. And now it's a 3v2. Smart choice here to go for their rotate towards A, especially since uh, you notice their killjoy there lurking oh, no. in heaven. Oh, the tricks. The tricks. The timing was so close. Tricks could have gotten that kill onto Monsky, who had a sliver of HP. And Akashi now has pushed on forward. The Gearhawks looking to flat things on A side. Very good rotations. And the I Tamaraus, they, they have that disadvantage right now in the numbers. So they want to play it safe and sound. But here comes the defense. They know that they can still make this a 4 to 0. It's still very winnable for the I Tamaraus. But the Gearhawks, they have a chance here, Ryujin. Yes, they do. This could go. And this could go either way for them. They hit their shots. They're going to be in a very, very good position. You know, not big of a lead. The tricks has something to say about that. Satchel's in. Flights in. Good. The kill on to Blitz. And now it's a 1v2. He knows there's someone in hell. Akashi with the sheriff. That's a thrifty win. And that's their first round on the board for the TUP Gearhawks. Yeah, that's a big one. It's actually something that we can see when FIT is playing against any team. Sometimes a bit of that over-eagerness on the defending side. It could blow up in their face. And that garage take there by the Gearhawks eventually getting a take down. It was a good effort from Batgos and Miko to try and set up that crossfire. But after everything is said and done, I would honestly flip the script a little bit it would have been miko instead on that other side maybe a chance to dash on the way because with bat goes just stuck there it was fight or die and he did die at the very end now the gear hawk still in this game and on on a map like split on the attacking side right every round really matters for you 
Yeah, as much you, you need to Here. milk out as much attack rounds as you can. It really pays the that you have, you know, um secured the attack side. Um it's a little bit more diff uh, it's a little bit more easy for you to hold on defense. You know, you can uh, just play patient. This is a very, very um controllable map, considering that uh, if you take a look at their comp, um the uh, fit itamaraus have the sage. So it's a little bit difficult. I, I like though that they are not being the the typical sage players, you know, walling mid and that's it. You basically waste 300 credits, right? But look at this, ducks. 40 seconds left in the clock. And this is a five-man garage push. I can uh -huh. just see them bursting into the site right now. Yeah, Michelin Man, you'll be proud of that one. Beautiful slow orb though to go for the stall. And in a game like this, it's just all about getting in the way. And here we go yet again. Wall right now gonna get broken. Lockdown though. Buying space here for the Gearhawks and the Ice Hammerhouse. They can't really contend with this. And they're gonna get the taint on the floor. But now we have it. Backos does go down after Monsky. But Admiral and Trix. They're gonna get on the board instead for the defense. 4v3. There's a single detain, but it's all about keeping an eye out. And the eye Tamaras, they have the eye in the sky, they have the blade storm, and they're on the high ground here, Ryujin. Yes, they do. They also place down the lockdown, which means they have a limited time they need to do or make their presence known. Miko and Admiral each getting a kill of their own tricks, finishing it out, and that's just a beautifully executed retake, relying on that lockdown to force their opponents out of the positions and just, you know, no lives lost. Just a little damage here and there. Yeah, and Admiral casually flexing the, the Zed skin right there. You know, party party, it's uh, it's quite a sight on B site. But, you know, personally, I gotta I got give you a spicy take here, Ryujin. That, that's the Spectrum, the, the Zed one. Mm -hmm. It reskin minima. That's my take on it. Reskin minima. minima is like recolored, recolored. Honestly, it, it's, that, it's, that, it's, that, it's that last animation that, that gives it the value. But as the gun skin itself, not my cup of tea. Uh, it looks too similar to something else, but similar mm. site itself. Four to one right now. The I Tamara was just doing it yet again. It, they gave a chance to the Gearhawks, and that was the one. We'll see if they can keep this up on the defense. I see, Germanium does have the Blade Storm up. Those can make for some pretty nutty outplays. Just one shot to the head. One good tap here will cost you your life. Miko barely, barely misses the shot. He makes it up though. Gets Germanium. And that's their duelist down. No more turret as well. Brands gets the better of Miko. There's the M3 frag that they needed. Now it's 4v4. They're still going to be able to secure heaven. No, they are not. Kiel making sure that it, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Blitzen. Oh, wait a minute. Blitzen gets Blitzen. a kill with the Sheriff. All he needs are those one taps, and he's getting to take that. Bat goes to on the other side, and Blitzen now going to fall to the field of battle 2v1, but Admiral will steer the ship clear into the open seas. And I Tamara is now A-OK -okay yet again, 5-1 to one score line. And let's check out who's at the very top. We got Trix, we got Miko, we got Bat goes, we got Admiral. Kill playing the supporting cast, but six assists with the Omen. The Paranoias have been on point, and hasn't that been the storyline so far of I Tamara's here? absolutely on point in the regular season and we're seeing it yet again the usual domination from the squadron yeah i mean we did see them in the previous see uh you know just getting better and today this is probably the best um fit itamara squad we've seen you know we've seen them uh play play their hearts out and now it really shows you know that the team has grown not only you know individually but just just how well they play together, you know, just how organized they are. Look at that, Miko pushing up with three teammates up in mid. Not even expecting that. Germanium, though, reduces their numbers down, but Bat goes quick to go for the res here. 5v3, and things are looking pretty bleak for the Gearhawks. Yeah, so Sage value again. Map like split, you can go for those safe reses, and here for the Gearhawks, they're just gonna go for that peak into the repel area inside these vents and Blitzen will get that takedown. Now, I did mention a while ago my concerns about the Gearhawks roster. It's, it seems like there's all about that setup, all about that huzzah, but the I Tamaraos, they just don't let you set up in the first place. And oh, Bat goes with me there. Germanium gives the chance to go for the turnaround takedown. And yes, he does. Keldo holding the line. And as we see a medley of colors, it's going to be 3v2 here. Keldo right now trying to keep an eye out. Blitzen going to catch out Admiral in response. 2v2 right now. Miko though has to hold. Ver 
forces the freeze, but the operator, it's kind of weak, it gets the stun, but the Phantom is there to get that final takedown. 6-1, to one. the I Tamaraz do it again, will themselves the victory, but as I mentioned before for the Gearhawks, their whole plan, you have Blitzen on the Breach, you got Monsky on the Astra, where are the setups? Because the I Tamaraz, they will give you no time to do that. Really, this is more geared towards dealing with a slow paced team, you know, someone that you can read. And with how Itamaros are playing, they're not making it any easier for the Gearhawks. You know, they're pushing up mid with three people one round, and then the next round, they're just holding inside. So you cannot predict what they're gonna do here. And especially with Miko hitting his nutty shots. Never mind. <laughs> There. Well, you, well. you ask for a nutty shot and Prance <laughs> will give it to you instead. It's like, yo, I can crack some skulls and that's been one of the saving bases for the Gearhawks, getting those one taps. But then again, again, we want to see more from this composition in terms of the setup into the knockdown. And there we have it now. Aftershock into the boom, but at the very least, they don't not kill. Who only is able to get one in that a hole. 3v4, Gearhawks now with the advantage. And a very interesting call here to put the jet all the way on the other side. These guys want keeping out all the ramps and tricks will be there to ramp up the scoreline and to ramp up the pressure. Gets the kill now on Germanium and here we have the push. Trix though looking for more and it seems like this guy will not be denied. Trix on it yet again like a bullet and you can see inspired gameplay from this guy. 6-1 to one becomes 7-1 to one. and in all honesty, this is the way I Tamaraz plays in Akad Arena. Yeah, um, just look at that retake. Come on, yeah, you gotta admit. That was a 3v4 retake and they played it perfectly. No one, no one peeking just a little bit too early. No one peeking a little bit too late. Just perfect timing, knowing which spots to check, knowing where your teammates are. It really... It really, really matters. I mean, you saw Trix there kind of lurking towards the ramp side, got got the kill onto Germanium, stationed there watching the watching the flank, watching ramp, and then the rest of his teammates securing elbow and sight. It's just a sight to see. Nice wordplay right there, uh, you are, uh, you are. Uh. So the, 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 the homonyms, I actually don't know. I don't know those, I don't think, I don't know those things anymore. You know, the onomatopoeias, the alliterations, big words for fancy things. But we mm -hmm. keep it simple, we keep it clean, and we keep it for the I Tamaras right now with a 7th one scoreline. Now, there's always that potential. I'm gonna keep hyping this up until we see the breach gameplay into the knockdowns from like the dashes and the nades. Now the Gearhawks try to do it in the middle, but Batgos does get in the way yet again with a standard wall by the midpoint of this map. The I Tamaras though, they're playing it safe and sound this time. They are respecting Gearhawks already in position. But keep an eye out here, Ryujin, especially on that A site. The spike is there, and look who else is there. It's Kiel looking for kills for himself. Mm, I love this position from Kiel. It locks down majority of the A site. It gives you information. No! He almost got the drop on to Brands. But now this should be a free A site for them. But I'm not surprised that the Aita Maraus could still win this round. They are the kings of a retake, but Brands has something to say about that. Admiral trading him in. 4v3 lockdown is available for Admiral. He can push them towards that corner. You know know where it. people place their Killjoy ultimates here. Looks like the uh, looks like the cosmic divide has also been put down. Look, they're gonna go for the half seas here. As oh, there we go. Have There's that change. There's the that goes. That goes. You gotta hit these kind of shots. No, Jermaine will do it again. How the hell does he stay alive in this scenario? And Jermaine, this is the second time I've seen him just like, hey, you, you, if I kill you, and that mm -hmm. after everything said and done, the Gearhawks, they take another point. Now, now, this is where I gotta say something about the eye out. Just keep doing what you're doing. For a while ago, yep. get in the way of these setups because it's the best answer when you allow the Gearhawks to get in position, to play it right, to initiate on their call. We saw it there, Prance with the movement, Blitzen with just all of that utility, and Germanium. This guy, this guy should, after this game, maybe buy a lottery ticket because it feels like he's got an <laughs> poorly clover. He's looking very, very lucky to stay alive. Miko, though, he wants to contend with the operator on the defense. There we go with the stun. But Batkos, he's had enough. He goes for the push for Sakashi. Puts it now, though. Does get the kill and does get the rolling thunder. And a perfect chance here, Ryujin, for the Gearhawks to come because Blitzen is leading the charge. 
They are trying their best, Blitz, and making his presence known in heaven. Miko is the only one left. Germanio surrounds them. And it's all up to Kiel coming from the A side. Still a 1v3, still winnable. He has a paranoia. But will he check France here in heaven? This is still dangerous position, Dax. This can he can he? Oh, oh. There's a chance. There's all. It's all about getting a spot on, and he's knocking. He's like, "Hello, ma'am, sir. Um, delivery po here in the condos, here in the tower." But Kiel, might he get spotted here? He does able to move up to the rafters, and now he gets to take down all the mods. He operates and now making some noise, but the backstab is possible. Prance right now, though, gonna get hit by the paranoia. I believe Kiel giving a chance to push. Time is ticking, though. Gun is thrown away. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Why? The, that the, was the, uh, the, the CS fake uh, flash. That was the CS fake yeah, flash with the, with the rifle. I don't. I don't much. understand. I don't understand. Okay, pretty maybe much. there was no time. But why, Regent? Please, please save me. Uh, that was pretty much. That was pretty much. Uh, Sigina. Say your name around, Sigina. Oh, you, you take this round. Uh, I'll, I'll just surrender. My gun to you. Well played, good sir. Wait, I just want to cry just a little bit. I don't know why. Oh. oh. Well, and Trickson does go down. You know the Eye Tamaras, they're very, they're very sporty. They're very, they're pretty much showmen who have a lot of fun in the collegiate scene. But yeah, you know, you gotta respect the Gearhawks, and we we said it multiple times. I've been hyping it up that when the Gearhawks gets the setup on. That's their chance to shine. And 7-3 can become 7-5 very, very quickly. The I Tamaras, they, you know, respect begets respect. And they need to respect their opponents soon or else. The Gearhawks is a squad that will capitalize on those opportunities, Ryujin. Pretty much, uh, this is probably one of the, like you said, no, if they're able to set up, force their opponents to do what they want, you know, uh, play on their terms, Gearhawks can still win this game and, you know, make this a very, very good half. You know, maybe 7-5. to five, And then they're going to go on defense where arguably they're going to benefit more with their with their agent comp. But this is quite a free B-side for them. I mean, this is an eco round for the item rounds. So if you're probably going to try and get some cheesy, cheeky left. kills, Last there's the cheeky standing. kills that they needed. But now Five it's just up to Admiral. Let's see if he... Can lead his team to the cheeky oh. win. Nope. Blitzen makes his presence known. Bulaga. And <laughs> seven four now. It's Last like, hey, I'm from switch. the staircase. You don't expect me to come here. And it's been quite a, a team effort, honestly, for the Gearhawks. You see, nine takedowns for Blitzen, nine for Prance. And even though Prance has died the most times in this game, I I do gotta give him the fact that he knows how to play flights well on this map. How many times have we seen him blast back all the way to the tower? It's just Itamaraos are a squad that can really punish that, but the movement he's done here has bought space for the Gearhawks. That means Sandalage, you don't... For entry, you don't need to get that kill. Kaya nga entry frag. You're just an entry player to get that space for your team. And there are times where the Gearhawks can capitalize on the noble sacrifice of France to get the round win. But this is it. Last chance for the Gearhawks to take an attacking side win. I Tamaraus, they want to make it 8-4 before the half ends. And in this case, Batko's now playing it a bit more standard. The I Tamaraus, actually, this is this is a, akin to more how they play on the pro side. Safe and sound, staying in the corners. Mm -hmm. They're still holding their angles. They're not doing anything too aggressive, nothing too risky. They're just going for the, you know, the, the safe picks. Nothing that, you know, because when you have a man disadvantage, it's so difficult to deal with. Especially, again, if you look at the composition of the Gearhawks, they are going to thrive on you if they have the man advantage over you. But now, time sticking, 45 seconds left, and it just looks like they're all over the place right now. Yeah, well, it's a scattershot approach, and it's all about playing for picks by this point. No, 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 just all the way in the safe side, but bat goes! That goes, see, he's like Batman. Come on, name palang, diba? He's just up left. there surprising you. He's the Dark Knight, and he's the one who gets the kill from above. France, so now with the boom bot, and as the Gearhawks lose their breach, they're gonna initiate with something else. It's the lock that into play, but Miko playing for that surprise, going for the takedown, but Monsky will catch him instead. 4v4, and now the showstopper gonna get unleashed. There's the rocket spread flare, and France looking for a target, but the Happy New Year gets no greetings, and instead, he will get Bratkos in his demise. 4v3 right now, spikes can get planted. 
And the eye Tamara has tried to play the retake, but in all honesty, this more passive playstyle, it's not working for them. And the Gearhawks are looking to capitalize. Akashi now on the board. Page is going to get thrown here by Trix on the other side of the wall. It's a small chance here, but FIT, there's still a chance. Meteor Region, there's still a chance. Still a chance, but will Kiel get the kill here? They're right beside each other, just waiting for the Cosmic Divide to drop. And here we go. The countdown. Hulaga from them, the other side. Three people waiting on the other side of the Cosmic Divide. Seven to five half. This is still Switching manageable sides. for the Gearhawks. They are going to the defending side, which is gonna benefit their composition right now. I mean, they have the Breach, the Astra, and the Killjoy. They can make something, they can make beautiful things happen if they execute it properly. We've seen it in pro play, you know, the Breach. Shock into a gravity well there in garage. It's pretty deadly. Yeah, and and it, there have been so many incredible moments so far. You can hit that wall as well with Act Rain on TikTok. Make sure to follow at the Gravity. Then if you are part of our first 1,000 followers, you'll get the chance to win some of our weekly giveaways. Post a tweet with the hashtag AA TikTok giveaway to make your entry count. And has it that been the, the case for the Gearhawks? They make their entries count when they get the setup. In the last four rounds of that first half. They were given the chance and they really seized it. They took the reins of the bull, or in this case, this I Tamarau, and they were able to get a lot of control because of it. Now, Ryujin, as we get the flash combo here, as Jermaine will knock it down versus Trix. At the shot on the right hand side, it's all about breach and clear with the breach itself. And the Gearhawks are going to be pushing for the scenario right now in terms of the standings. It seems like they're looking to be shaky here for the Itamaras. Miko, though, on the board to get to. Looking for third. Admiral will be there to save the day instead. 3v2 after everything is said and done. But back to my point real quick. For the Itamaras, they're in the playoffs, sure. But if they lose this, they're not going to be getting that first seed. And for the Gearhawks, if they get this win, they're on the safety side. They're on that four seed to prevent themselves having to play for their lives in relegation. Spike but now planted. the Itamaras moving over to B site and planting that spike down. This is, this is like you said, this is a little bit more pressuring for the Gearhawks because they are fighting for their lives. It makes, uh, it, it kind of saves them from relegation if they get this game. And for the Itamaras though, it's kind of a uh, bonus. Right? It's so, uh, you know, guys, we can pretty much secure first seed and we're pretty much straight into the semi. So, why not get for that cheat, that key advantage? But Monsky doesn't want him to get that. Miko with a 3k in this round. And Kiel uh, looks like the will of Kiel and Miko. They want to go to the semis, they want that advantage. Yeah, and that's the whole thing about I Tamrao's will themselves to victory. So B and Sanila is like, Oi, you guys you guys wanna win now? And once everyone gets on the same page, once everyone decides that that's the play, that's when the I Tamrao shine. But that's easier said than done. And honestly, we've seen the likes of USD dismantle the squadron and their play style. So coming into the playoffs, I feel like they're gonna actually have to go for a bit of a bootcamp setup. At the very least, try and hone their skills more on the teamwork side because the mechanics are on point the tactics are on point but it's all about collating and making everything work for the gearhawks they're not done and in this eco state they have gotten to dominium now gonna go for a big big distraction from here but prance is unable to capitalize and his kill gonna be able to get through instead boombot now making some noise it's 3v2 france now did fall and after everything is said and done the eye tamaras they just give us a bit of deja vu if you ever get that feeling of deja vu for Eugen because it's another Another beating for FIT. Yeah, and really, I'm gonna look. Oh, wait a minute. Akash oh. with the cheeky little lurk there gets the kill on Admiral. And now it's a completely winnable. Really, it's a completely winnable Last round. Miko and Akashi. No, Miko makes sure to get it, finish him off. But I, it's, it's funny because as I was watching that round, you know, going back to your point about entry fragging and get it, not necessarily getting the kills, that's exactly what happened to Miko. Miko. Ashton to site, and I just to pin up the site. He didn't get the frags. It was Kiel and the Admiral getting the frags while they were securing that B site. But it's the space that Miko made. You know, it's the okay, guys. You guys focus on killing them. I'll just get their attention, distract them a little bit with how jittery of a jet I am. You know, so it it worked. It worked well, and with him finally closing things out as well. Yeah, and that's been the case here for both sides. It's all about those distractions. 
Oh, we also saw it there for TUP as Jermaine was starting to say, Hello, look at me. I'm Mr. Meesix. I'm here on site. And France was the one looking for the takedowns, but it worked more for FIT over TUP. And it's a 9-5 to five score line. Now, guns should be in hand here for the defense. And after everything is said and done, they lose the omen here for FIT. So smokes are gone. The paranoia is not going to be into play whatsoever. The FIT, if if you feel like it's going to be a hot day, well, it's going to get even hotter because Drive Peaks are the call. Bat goes trying to play Infiltrator, trying to give in our, give us our, his best Metal Gear impression, but it's Strix way. instead who plays it right, and he's going to be riding that one on. Blitzen does go down 4v3 now. We, have, we also heard the Blade Storm activate for Miko, so this could be deadly good use of the paint shells forcing germanium out but there's three people in the b site Both this is not back. gonna be a it very a pleasant lava. experience for the fit tamaraus let's see though how they play this post plant what is the call but he need to put that spike down first can't post it but miko he's gonna post brats to the wall hit him there with a blade and he's not done trick though with a last surprise oh, and you never saw that one goodness. coming from the i tamaraus Stealing hearts and stealing that win. What a setup and what a knockdown here from Miko and Trix. What a bait though. The little tap of the spike there forces them to swing. Miko here got the better of France. Look at this clean one tap to the head. And Trix just doing tricks, showing his his own tricks there. Huh? How many times yeah. did I say tricks in the past yeah. 10 seconds? <laughs> You're doing it again, Richard. <laughs> You're doing it again, and I gotta appreciate you for that. But we have to appreciate, really, the chemistry of FIT in their natural form. My biggest criticism of this roster, it, it does feel like that they just have that utter confidence to dominate anyone. And that kind of blows up in their face against the teams like USD, I gotta say, where it does feel like they're a bit more structured compared to everyone else. So they always have that firepower. They always have that skill. And I just want to see them finally bring their all really to the Akkad Arena scene. Just bring even more of the tactics that they know from the pro side. But there you have it. Cloudburst now getting thrown on over. Gearhawks in the meantime, still a chance. We saw that late rally in that first half. And they're on the defending side here, so... On Split, we all know by now, Split is still that defending side of the map. Even, even, even in the SEA, it seems like the attacks are the ones getting the wins. And here we go again. Bat goes on the board. It's 5v4. Blitz on the other side. And a beautiful shot with the Marshall. But can he survive versus the Pain Shells? The answer is no, as Trix will come and keep it close versus the side of P. Oh my goodness. The little one tap there saying good night. And right, this is. This is pretty much a UST. Uh, I timer out. I heard you say UST a while ago. I, I know so your heart is for UST. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. But but yeah, this is the I timer show, and like my, like my point right was Ooh. as Monsky gets a beautiful kill there onto Tricks. It's FIT if they can outclass and outskill the opposition, mm -hmm. get score lines like this. But coming yeah. into the playoffs, right, they have to be wary when playoff mode is on for the likes of the LSU, for ADMU, for USD, etc. That's that's when the Itamaros kind of falter and we actually get a timeout here for the Gearhawks. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, I mean, if you take a look you know, at the Itamaros, like I said, they do keep getting better every season, you know, quarterfinals finish in season one, semi-finals finish in season two. Maybe this is the season that they do secure it. But like you said, playoff time is a different time. You know, squads, schools turn up. They uh, start to focus more. They start playing uh, a bit less risky. No no risk, no nonsense. You, you This is where you see them um, just lock in and focus. It's a different breed. It's a different type of game when we see these teams perform in the playoffs. Yeah, and, and seeing the caliber of teams some of the members of FRT are in in the pro side, you already expect that, you know, they have those big vein strats. They've been playing at the top level of the PH local scene. And in all honesty, sometimes when I see Itamaraus, I say, I expect this, but I also expect more. And it feels like that's the case for themselves. Every single season, they've been improving on that playoff performance, improving on the playoff standings. But where is that championship? Maybe this season is their time. 18 take that. So for Trix, he, he's had a journey, honestly, in the pro side, moving from different teams. Now he's back with the Oasis fam. But I got to say, for the eye, Tamara, it's all, all about that confidence. Gearhawks in the meantime, they've put up such a good fight. 
on the first half, but here on the second, what do we expect them to play a little bit more with the utilities? We haven't really gotten them as of yet, but now it seems like the script has been read and the Astra going for the Nova Falls. Good stall so far for the Gearhawks. It's a way to compensate Ryujin because simply put, we're last on the stage, the buff, so they eye. have to use the Astra and the Breach plus maybe the Raising the Killjoy to put a stop to the push of the I Tamar House. Yeah, they have to rely on their utility. And I mean, their utility is pretty deadly if you combo it well, you know. Um, good communication, maybe proper calls, good timing, and it will do amazing work in delaying the Itamaraos and forcing them towards, uh, you know, unfavorable spots. But look at the Itamaraos. They are positioned for mid. Looks like Trix wants to bring the party. Doesn't hit anyone. No one's home, Monsky. Barely, barely holding on. He saw it. No, he didn't. Monsky gets a drop on Tricks. Gets a double in heaven. And he is the gatekeeper. Gets three even. And now this is still a very, very good round for the Gearhawks. Blitzen still controlling heaven, but Kiel Cover going up. using the shot is step, stepping on everybody here. Let's see if he's gonna get more. 14 seconds left on the clock. Oh, who have control of the spike? Kiel gets three. That's four. What? No. Boom. But. Boom. But. Good job, Boom. But. Good. Good job, Boom. But. Good job, Boomba. That's a... oh, my... Boomba good gets day. a treat there. <laughs> yeah, he, he gets a he gets a scholarship, my friend. Good day, manager. Says the Boomba, and it just blows up in the face of the Miko who had an operator in hand. The timing was just perfect from the Boomba, and you mentioned a while ago, heaven control. Yeah, it was a bit of a wacky end there that the Boomba mm -hmm. gets the kill, but honestly. You made such a good point, Ryujin. Heaven controlled by Blitzen. That fault line was just crucial for that victory. And it allows the Gearhawks to get on the board. But the Itam Rouse, they're not done. And they want to go for more. It's a Venn diagram, though, by A side. Double lockdown fever. And Miko, he's infiltrating. He's isolating. And he gets rid of Akashi with some help there from Trix and his pain shell. Shots do come. Lockdown is broken. Space is created here for the, the side of Itam Rouse. But Gearhawks, they will contend with the Rolling Thunder. And the dash on him from Germanium. He will look like a jewel there to get to. Two tricks though with the kill on the France and Admiral finds Germanium there. 3v2 now. Batco's keeping an eye out on the screens, but the wall is set on up. And the Gearhawks are trying to go for the push, trying to isolate these members. Batco's with the kill, but Monsky with the final Admiral, and he's the only one left with 8 HP, Ryujin. 8 HP and a dream. He did activate the Cosmic Divide, but he didn't. No, no. Rest in peace. It was at that moment. I knew Monsky's time was up. 12 to 6. One point away from securing the final win for the Itamaraos here. You know, 4 and 1. And looking pretty good for them. But the buys. The buys of Gearhawks here. That's it's not looking so good for them a bit dicey and we were talking about the statics a while ago it's all about that upset potential today in all honesty it's a day that can be clear cut on the results but it just means that any upset right now versus the higher seeded teams it's gonna be even sweeter because it will allow you to prevent yourself from getting into relegation might be able to mess up the playoff picture as well and in the case of the last game might be able to just eliminate the team from the playoffs all throughout. But then again, the Gearhawks, they're not done. And we know this squad to be scrappy. We know this squad that they can still contend no matter what. And you mentioned the buys. They're not the best, but the Gearhawks, they don't care. They're going to fight to the bitter end. And a good pickoff there from Blitz. And yet again, he has been a martial god from the screens. And he gets a pickoff for the defense to make it 4v4. Yep, this is, like you said, this is a scrappy buy tricks does manage to get the opening kill which will open up the a site wow oh no france getting the pick of his life the there make sure that they have the spike but now it's a 3v2 scrappy buys full hp and a lot of utility still available monsky about to keep Nico here will he get the kill no that's the gun difference showing oh germanium Proving to be the better jet for now, but this, let's see if he will be able to clutch this, Nox. Yeah, last stand. Here we go, Germanium. Can he actually find a way to warm himself in there? Gladbrist gonna get thrown, but Trix, he's had a hot hand, and he has the high ground on site also. We have the Killjoy there. Turn gonna get set on up. It does get broken, but as soon as Admiral peeks, Germanium will say hello, Trix now. 
giving his presence and making it known. But Trick's gonna go down and Germanium will keep TUP alive. It's gonna be dicey, it's gonna be close, but it will be a defuse with five seconds to spare. And when it doubts, the Gearhawks, they can rely on Germanium to play it clutch. Yeah, I mean, that, that Gearhawks putting on their uh, House Mormon cosplay there, you know, we're not, this is not a large buy. For, uh, that, but this is a proud buy, you know, winning the clutch <laughs> there. And I, I like it. Split. I like the term. I like the term. So you have your eco, you have your half buy, you got your full buy, and you got your proud buy. I got it. I got it. It's like, you know, we, we can do this. We can do this. But can they do it again, though? It's another Marshall, but in the of hands way. of the jet that popped off, Blade Storm now is also available. But can DUP do it again here, Eugene? I certainly think so. They're still they're feeling good. They know that they can Rested. still clutch this out. Force in overtime, perhaps. Here we go. Battle of the Jets. Anime battle. Miko versus Germanio barely dodges each other there. Thanks to the flashes of their teammates. Miko does get okay, onto Blitzen, so that's their flash down. Germanium at least takes care of the omen now. It's a 4v3. Miko still dangerous with the blade storm. Potentially oh. pushing. Ooh, the right One click barely, barely touches Akashi. And now Miko, another last that. stand. 30 and HP and a dream. Gets two. This is still winnable for him. Will he oh, check tricks? No. Ah, Attackers win. No. Tricks on the high ground in the eye tamer house. Ryujin, they set the bar for today. Everyone else in the playoff picture, you gotta get a win like FIT because if not, it's FIT straight to the semifinals for your group. Four to one on the standings. The FIT I Taros take the victory versus TUP. A great, great effort by the Gearhawks. But after everything was said and done, their whole composition, I gotta say, it was all about that setup. But more often than not, it was FIT doing the knocking down instead there, Ryujin. It was really just uh, making making things look easy. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but things are looking promising for the Aitamaro squad, you know? A lot of, the, a lot of discipline shown. A lot of um, teamwork and the good execution. A little bloopers here and there for bat ghost, you know, a little whiffsies, but hey, it happens to everybody. What matters is that they grab the win here, grab for now the top spot, you know, in, in their own group. So I'll take it. Meanwhile, yeah, for no. TUP, fingers crossed that they do not get sent down to relegation. They still have a 25% chance of securing that fourth place. So, hey. I take the twenty five percent then zero. <laughs> yeah, you know, one out of four. You you just gotta mm -hmm. go for it there. And speaking of one out of four, it's one to four on their score line. And it, it seems like for TUP, they they basically wanted to try and win it. And we saw it on their the first half, especially that streak there. But once we got into the defense, the I Tamra was a squadron this mechanically inclined. You put them on the attacking side no matter what map, and they will be able to just overrun the competition, especially the Khalid side. Tricks with an incredible game, absolutely inspired effort, thrusting his team into the playoff picture. But it wasn't just all him, because everyone stepping on up on the frags, or on the case of the Omen, it was mostly that paranoia to set things up there for the rest of the squadron. But for the Gearhawks, I gotta give it to the Double Duelist, especially for Germanium's clutch there. We saw the entries as well from the side of the Rays and a bit of the setup play from the Breach. But honestly, this, this composition, it's innovative, yes. But if you're not gonna be able to, I'd say, be on par with the traditional comp in terms of the lethality, it's not really gonna work on that. And versus I Tamros, kung, kung tipong, ito lang yun eh, pa setup, setup pa kayo. Sinasabi ng I Tamaraos. Uh, Kasi lalapit uh, na kami. Ito, you're approaching me. You're mm -hmm. approaching me. And that's what the I Tamaraos do. They step on the opposition. And that's how they got in this win here, Ryujin. Yeah, pretty much. You know, really, really good stuff coming from I Tamaraos. Really just, ah, huwag nyo na try. Huwag nyo na itry set up. <laughs> ah, is. Alam na namin. Papunta pa lang kayo. Andiyan na kami. Literally for them. But really, overall, all that action is just game one today because we have a lot more in store for you today. We're just going to be taking a very, very short break and we'll see you right after a few minutes.